Now, Death Row Records, one of the most prolific West Coast record labels in the 90s, was founded by Suge Knight in 1991, along with Dr. Dre, the DOC, and Dick Griffey. The label included generational talent such as Tupac Shakur, Snoop Dogg, Dr. Dre, Nate Dogg, Warren G, RBX, and Michelle. Death Row Records was loved for many reasons, such as the distinct West Coast sound that revolved around funk-inspired beats, smooth melodies, and hardening lyrics from rappers such as Tupac Shakur, Snoop Dogg, and Dr. Dre, all artists who were highly responsible for the success of Death Row Records. Death Row was sort of ran like a gang, as it was basically a bunch of street dudes turned rappers, which led to aggressive marketing tactics such as highly publicized beefs with other artists and record labels. The most known to everyone, the East Coast versus West Coast battle between Puffy, Biggie, and Mace and the Bad Boy Records clique versus Death Row Records, which includes Suge Knight, Pac, and all the other artists. The cultural impact of Death Row included artists like Tupac, who used their gangster persona and audience to bring attention to the cruel inner city life with real life issues such as poverty, violence, and the worst of all, police brutality, things that many people of color faced on a daily basis. Now, before Suge Knight, Turning to the hip-hop boogeyman, Suge Knight seemed to have a decent childhood. He grew up in LA, he was a football player at UNLV with offers to play on the San Francisco 49ers and threw those opportunities away to be in the streets. So you may be wondering, how did Suge Knight enter the music industry? Let's just say, Suge saved the life of a well-known R&B artist and got hired as their security in return. In 1989, Suge Knight saved Bobby Brown's life as there was an alleged murder for hire on him. As crazy as it sounds, he boldly told the hitman to back off, and they listened. They had no choice but to listen. Suge Knight was that intimidating. This incident jumpstarted Suge Knight's career as Bobby Brown's security, as he went around the country with Bobby, going to different record labels, clubs, and music venues, and started to realize the amount of money the artists were losing to these publishing deals, which essentially gives record labels a percentage of whatever the artists made from the song simply by uploading the song and having the name associated with it. Let me paint the picture. You write the song, you pay for the studio time, you record the music videos, and the label gets a cut or whatever you make simply from their name being associated with you. Welcome to the music industry. I'm hearing back in the day, Death Row was more of a gang than a record label, as most of these artists were people from the streets with gang ties who did gang banging, sold drugs, and grew up in poverty and did just about anything to survive. Suge Knight had a lot of thugs running around Death Row, which made it really hard for his artists to have a good reputation because of the amount of fights they're getting into in the public eye at the clubs casinos is just a negative image that Suge Knight had in the music industry. Suge Knight would intimidate people with the size and other tactics to get anything he wanted as he was feared by many. Now, if you're a hip hop fan, you should be no stranger to their song, Ice Ice Baby, a song written by a 16 year old, Vanilla Ice. The song Ice Ice Baby sold 160 million copies. The song blew up. I mean, number one song in multiple countries, number one song on the radio. However, when the song blew up, a couple people came looking for a check. There was this artist who went by the name of Chocolate, real name Mario Johnson, who apparently wrote the hit song Ice Ice Baby and got zero financial compensation. So Suge Knight got a hold of the story and saw an opportunity for him to get some change as well as the artist Chocolate, who allegedly had associations with the song. Originally, when the story got out, the artist Chocolate was going to be given $400,000 in financial compensation, which was crazy money in the 90s and still is right now. However, should not reject the deal as he wanted writer points, which would give a percentage of the song for the rest of his life as long as people stream the music. Instead of taking the $400,000, they declined the deal and went straight to the source, Vanilla Ice. Suge pulled up on Vanilla Ice at a restaurant and introduced himself, Hey, I'm Suge, just to show him that Suge could get to him at anywhere and any time. Three weeks later, Suge pulled up on Vanilla Ice at some event just so we got used to seeing him. Now fast forward, Vanilla Ice had a show in Beverly Hills, and after the show, he went back to his room. It was him and his two bodyguards, and when they got inside, they saw Suge Knight and his goons. Vanilla Ice was outnumbered, outgunned, they were losing in every possible way. Now this is where the famous Suge Knight torture incident takes place. As Suge Knight spoke to Vanilla Ice alone on the balcony and convinced him to sign away royalties to his song by hanging him over the balcony 15 stories up in the air, coercing him to sign it. When this story broke in the media, people were no longer scared of Suge Knight. They were terrified. 
Now, both individuals deny this story happening in interviews because, for one, why would Suge admit to doing this and have the writer points retracted? And for two, why would Vanilla Ice admit to being bullied and coerced and hung over a balcony in front of the public like that wouldn't affect his reputation and his pride? Now, from what I've heard over the years, Suge Knight didn't say, I'm going to throw you over the balcony. But with them both being high up on the balcony and alone, Suge Knight made an inference of what would happen if Vanilla Ice didn't sign the paper, and he did. Now, Vanilla Ice anteed up and signed the paper, which gave them 3 to $4 million from the song Ice Ice Baby, which was used to start the most prolific West Coast record label, Death Row. When people got wind of the story, they said, why would Vanilla Ice give credit to another artist who had no contribution to the song? Now, you have to understand that Vanilla Ice is a white boy in a black-dominated music culture. He couldn't be a white boy in a black dominated culture and a snitch. It was extremely unfortunate how this multiple platinum song that he put a lot of effort into was sort of shipped away from someone who allegedly had involvement with no real proof or hard evidence as he basically got bullied into signing away his points. Although this tough situation that seemed unethical to many happened, it was used to start one of the greatest record labels of all time. At first, shouldn't I had good intentions when he learned about artists were actually getting ripped off by the label and he wanted to make the change. However, when he got money, he started to get more greedy. Even Dr. Dre, who left Ruthless Records for the same reason, realizing how the record labels were taking advantage of him, got into a Suge Knight in 1996 where he left Death Row over an issue involving his masters, which is a very valuable asset to have, which creates leverage in the music business. The music business is a very shiesty business where people will sign their life away Four million dollars, not even knowing it's a loan, and they have to pay it back before they can see a dime. An industry where artists get taken advantage of due to the lack of information and lack of security. With Snoop Dogg, the new owner of Death Row, who knows? The sky's the limit. Thank you guys for watching. If you're interested, I recommend you watching the Curse of Gucci Mane's 1070 Records tagged above. I'm gone. Gucci Mane's 1070 record label, formerly known as So Icy Entertainment or 1017 Eskimo Records was an Atlanta-based label with distribution through Atlantic Records, which is under the major parent company, Warner Music Group. Throughout the years, Gucci Mane assigned major talent from Hot Boy West, Pooh Shiesty, Matt Critter, Chief Keef, Big Scar, Coach the Ghost, Fujiano, and Rollo Fam Goon. Texas rapper Hot Boy West signed with 1017 in July of 2021 and seems to be one of the more active artists outside of music as he was accused of robbing someone of a watch that they planned to buy off him. The story goes, when he signed to Gucci Mane in July of 2021, Gucci Mane gave him a Rolex welcoming him to the team. And allegedly, in December of 2021, he tried to go sell this later and rob the potential buyer of $9,000, which is how much he was selling it for. 